Islands are a middle ground between land and water where many species live and reproduce. Freshwater wetlands make up 75% of all of Delaware's wetlands. Replenishing and cleaning our groundwater, protecting us from storms and heavy rainfall, and providing critical habitat for many species of fish and wildlife. Unfortunately, in Delaware, freshwater wetlands are only partially protected by state and federal regulations, leaving them vulnerable to being filled and destroyed. So come along today as we learn more about freshwater wetlands, why they're so important to preserve and protect, and visit a few examples, such as a bald cypress swamp, a coastal plain pond, and a freshwater tidal wetland. Let's go. First of all, what is a wetland? Well, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's an area of land that is wet. But every wetland has three characteristics. It has water at or near the surface for some part of the year. It has really wet soils that in Delaware usually are a gray with a little bit of orange in them and they're called hydric soils. And lastly, they have plants that are adapted to live in really wet conditions. These are called hydrophytic plants. There are many different types of freshwater wetlands, and that includes headwater flats, floodplain riverine, and isolated depressions. And all these wetlands get their water from either precipitation, such as rain or snow, from surface water runoff, or water that comes up from the ground. And the water levels tend to vary throughout the year. You'll usually see more water in the winter spring and less water in the summer and fall. Now the one thing that links all freshwater wetlands is the salinity of the water. Now salinity is a measurement of how much salt is in that water. And for freshwater wetlands, you need very little salt. Now that you've learned a little bit about what freshwater wetlands are, let's catch up with Andy and start exploring some of the different types Delaware has to offer. Hi, welcome to Trap Pond State Park, where today we're visiting a bald cypress swamp. Bald cypress swamps can be identified by the presence of, you got it, bald cypress trees. That was the easy one. Bald cypress trees are a deciduous conifer, which means that they're kind of like a pine tree, but they'll lose their needles in the fall. Bald cypress trees can be found as far south as Florida, and today we're in the northernmost natural stand of bald cypress trees in the United States. Bald cypress trees can live for hundreds of years and grow up to 120 feet tall, which is almost as tall as stacking three school buses end to end. Bald cypress trees can grow in dry environments, but they do survive very well in wet flooded areas like we're in today. And the way they do that is they have a special root adaptation, which we call a knee. And the knee provides a big support system for the tree so that it doesn't fall over, as well as it's believed that it pumps oxygen down into its roots to help it keep from drowning. A variety of creatures call the cypress swamp home, including wood ducks, which like to eat the seeds, as well as make nests inside hollowed out trunks. Turtles and frogs and salamanders will all live amongst the roots. Next up, we're gonna jump into a coastal plain pond. Hey there, ladies and gents. We're here east of Smyrna in a coastal plain pond. This wetland type, also known as the Delmarva Bay or a whale wallow, is one of the most vulnerable wetland types in Delaware to human impacts from development and from agriculture. Coastal plain ponds are predominantly found in southwestern Newcastle County and northwestern Kent County, although they're found in all three counties across the state. Coastal plain ponds are small, shallow depressions on the landscape that are only wet during certain seasons of the year. And they're often round or elliptical in shape. There are over a thousand coastal plain ponds statewide, and they're typically surrounded by woodland with this inner wetter area that does not have a tree canopy, but is usually covered by low shrubs and non-woody vegetation such as blueberry and feather foil. Coastal plain ponds are considered isolated because they don't have a stream that runs into them or a stream that runs out of them. And they're only wet during the winter and spring months during the year. And this one today, we're here in the fall and this is when it's usually dry. They're a very important habitat for rare and threatened plants and animal species. Frogs and salamanders use the wet time of year to breed and lay their eggs and only can, can only do so because predatory fish are unable to survive the lack of permanent water. After breeding, frogs and salamanders then scatter out into the drier wetlands and uplands to survive their summer habitat. Coastal plain ponds are very important for water quality too, as they act as a natural filter, removing nutrients and contaminants and sediments from the water, keeping our drinking waters clean. Now that you've learned about bald cypress swamps and coastal plain ponds, let's cruise on over to Kenny and we'll learn about another freshwater wetland type, tidal freshwater marshes. Welcome to our last stop on this freshwater wetland tour. This is a freshwater tidal wetland. Freshwater tidal wetlands are found along the expanse of coastal rivers. They have very low salinity and they get most of their water from ground or surface water sources. 
like brackish or saltwater marshes, they have daily cycles of tides. The only difference being they get an influx of freshwater instead of saltwater. Some of the plants that thrive in this ecosystem are spatter dock, water willow, wild rice, and pickerelweed. Some of Delaware's most iconic wildlife species call tidal freshwater wetlands home, like the bald eagle, the great blue heron, the yellow third warbler, and many species of dragonflies. Tidal freshwater wetlands are becoming vulnerable to saltwater intrusion from sea level rise and filling from development. They provide protection for flooding, storm surge, and erosion. And this is why they should be a high priority for preservation and restoration. These are just a few types of the freshwater wetlands that Delaware has, cleaning our waters, providing vital habitat for plants and animals, and protecting us from storms and floods. If you want to be more involved in preserving and conserving Delaware's freshwater wetlands, consider these options. Avoid wet areas when building new construction or establishing new agricultural fields. Select native plant species when landscaping and remove invasives such as Japanese honeysuckle, English ivy, and Phragmites. Allow for a vegetated buffer strip 5 to 10 meters wide between mowed areas and streams and rivers. And remember that you are Delaware's freshwater wetlands best chance for survival. Get out and enjoy them and see for yourself what makes them unique and beautiful. Talk to your friends and your community about the value of wetlands and how you can help conserve them. Thanks for joining us on our latest installment of Wetlands 101. Until next time.